Today, welcome to the Profit Price Spiral. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering funds and prop news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, the RBA has been warning of the risk of a wage price spiral, but analysis in a report, Profit Price Spiral, the truth behind Australia's inflation, from the Australian Institute, says company profits, not wages, have driven the soaring inflation in Australia. The think tank has released evidence of what it calls a profit price spiral, arguing big business earnings account for 69% of the inflation that is above the Reserve Bank's target range of 2 to 3%. The dramatic expansion of business profits have gone mostly ignored by the RBA and other macroeconomic policymakers who have focused instead on a supposed wage price spiral, which actually doesn't exist. This suggests the focus of the RBA on wage restraint is misplaced and unfair and that interest rates would be far lower today if companies had not gouged customers at the checkout. The RBA and its governor, Philip Lowe, have been warning of a so-called wage price spiral when price rises cause wages to increase, which in turn causes further price rises, which was an issue in the 1970s stagflation period. But Jim Stanford from the Australia Institute's Centre for Future Work has examined post-pandemic price rises and company profits and compared them to wages increases. Australia is in the midst of a supply-side inflation shock with price increases being driven by breaks in supply chains because of the pandemic and natural disasters, as well as energy supply disruption due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Sidebar, of course, they don't actually mention the big inflation driver, which, of course, was RBA taking rates too low and all the quantitative easing and also the government stimulus. But we'll leave that to one side. Companies, though, have posted profits over and above those increases in recent times. At a parliamentary hearing last Friday, Lowe admitted the central bank's models that guide its responses were not well suited for supply shocks. And of course, they don't take account of their cause through quantitative easing either. Increases in labour costs account for just 18% of the inflation above what the RBA wants to see before it eases interest rate increases. The most recent GDP data shows Australian businesses increased prices by a total of $160 billion a year above taxes, labour and other costs. Stanford says the evidence shows that the additional billions of dollars in company profits have led the soaring inflation that Australia is experiencing, and that without those profit gains, inflation since the pandemic would have risen much more slowly at around 2.7%. Stanford says the research shows company profits, not workers' wages, are the culprit for Australia's inflation issues and that the RBA and the government should be focusing on those rather than targeting workers through rising interest rates and low wage growth. We've been told a story that workers need to restrict wage growth and accept a permanent reduction in living standards in order to fix inflation, he said. This evidence shows that's an economic fairy tale. ABS data shows that without excess price hikes through the pandemic, inflation would likely be within the RBA target band, and hence there would be no need for the nine extreme back-to-back -back interest rate rises that are crushing households and mortgage holders, fueling the cost of living crisis. The most recent wage data released this week showed workers experienced the biggest reduction in real wages since records began, with wages growing over the year at just 3.3% while inflation sits at 7.8%. Lowe and the RBA board have warned more interest rate rises will be coming as it seeks to bring inflation back down. A profit price spiral is the main driver of inflation in Australia, therefore, rather than the supposed wage price spiral, which actually doesn't exist. And as at the September quarter 2022, which is the most recent available, Australian businesses increased prices by that total of $160 billion per year over and above their higher expenses 
for labour, taxes and other inputs, and over and above profits generated by growth in real economic output. Without the inclusion of those excess profits in final prices for Australian-made goods and services, inflation since the pandemic would have been much slower, an average annual of 2.7%, barely half of the 5.2% annual average actually recorded since the end of 2019. That pace of inflation would have fallen within the RBA's target inflation band, which is about 2.5%, plus or minus 0.5%. Excess corporate profits account for 69% of additional inflation beyond the RBA's target. Rising unit labour costs account for just 18% of that inflation. And it's worth noting, of course, that supermarkets, banks and petrol companies have recently posted huge profits on Thursday. Qantas posted $1.2 billion half-year profits, tripling revenues on Wednesday. Woolworths posted a 25% rise in profits. Supermarket profits have soared on the strength of rapid food price inflation. And on Tuesday, Coles net profit grew 11% in the latest half-year result announced on Monday. Beating forecasts and on Wednesday, Santos posted a 221% annual profit. Ampol, Australia's largest oil refiner, reported a 30% increase in first half net profit, buoyed by soaring petrol prices. And Commonwealth Bank posted a record $5.1 billion profit, up 9%, buoyed by extra interest income from rising interest rates. So this is a very important observation, I think, and it's one that I've been tracking insofar that we know that many companies have been jacking up prices. In fact, I made a show a few weeks ago when I highlighted the inflation within the supply chains from wholesale down to retail and how those were still coming through. And timely this is because yesterday there was a discussion in New Zealand about the question of corporate profits and to what extent that was driving inflation. And I'm going to end this show with the segment from that conversation between the Reserve Bank of New Zealand governor and the parliament in New Zealand. To high corporate profits and contribution potentially to inflation. Um, the Kansas City <coughs> Fed published some work that suggested that uh, firms setting higher prices because they had expectations of inflation uh, probably overshot <coughs> and that has contributed to inflation. Um, what work you know, will the RBNZ look at that? Now they were they were suggesting it didn't even require a monopoly situation, mm -hmm. and potentially in the US being much more competitive, uh, larger market. Um, that's why inflation's come down faster there. But in New Zealand, we have a couple of sectors that are stubbornly non-competitive, being small and far away, and various other things. So I'm just wondering if you know if RBNZ has looked at it all at that all. Will they look at that at all? Um, I would say there's more than a couple of sectors where weak competitive pressures are an issue in this economy. The fact of being small and, and distant, uh, as you said, uh, does not lend itself to sort of thickly competitive uh, markets. In terms of work that we've done uh, on, on sort of, you know, we, we spend time talking about a, a wage price spiral and how that would embed inflation in the economy and necessitate higher interest rates. We spend less time talking about a profit, uh, a price or a profit cost, cost, profit, price sort of spiral. Uh, and I think a big part of the reason for that is that we're really hamstrung uh, on the data front. We don't really have good uh, national accounts measures uh, of profitability mm -hmm. in this economy. And there's a, there's a few ways around it. We can sort of get at it through microdata. Um, and we do have a microdata like you know, using sort of tax records, that kind of stuff. Uh, and we do have a research agenda uh, in, in the microdata space uh, at Taputi Matua, and I'm really interested in this issue. Um, so going forward, uh, I, I would like us to be doing some work in the space, but, but the answer is we, we don't really know much about this issue uh, so, currently. So in a simple term, owners of capital can raise prices just as owners of labour can mm. ask for higher wages. Mm. Um, both are critically important. Mm to it and if um, prices are being risen for for no other reason then then um, then they think that they can achieve that and still make their customers that is what creates generalized inflationary pressure two observations yeah they did recognize that it could be an issue but two they're not really tracking it i suspect the same is true in australia too i suspect the rba wants to look the other way the government wants to look the other way because of course in australia Corporate profits 
come first and households are poor second. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.